Welcome to Summit's Online Encounter. Our mission is to provide locations where people like you can have life-changing experiences with God. This is one of those locations. We also gather each week as a church in the heart of St. Paul. As disciples of Christ, we're doing our best to be on mission, deliver hope, and champion this city. At any point in your journey, if you want to take the next steps, or you just want to stay in the loop with everything going on at Summit, just grab your phone and simply text the phrase, Be Known, to 651-360-2908. We will send you a short form. Please complete it so you can be known in our Summit family. There's always new opportunities to mention, so here's what's coming up soon. We hope you take advantage of these opportunities to grow in community and your own faith. One of the ways to grow your faith is through worship. Worship with our lives in serving and also worshiping Jesus with a song. We have pre-recorded music in our sanctuary to create a place for you to worship with us virtually. So focus in, give way to the space needed, and invest some time in worshiping Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm anointed to bring hope. The promise fulfilled in a moment. We're still watching it unfold. There's good news for the captive, a proclamation for every soul. This liberty is for the broken, an invitation to be made. to bring hope the promise fulfilled in a moment we're still watching it unfold there's good news for the captive a proclamation for every soul this liberty
One of the rhythms that's important to following Jesus is studying scripture. As we study the Bible, we can have hope, find guidance, be corrected, and receive truth into our lives. Let's open up God's word and hear this week's message. Okay, last time we were together, we were talking about the now and the next, caring for the now so there will be a next, and especially when it comes to our technology. We looked at the story of Babel and we actually laid out the foundation of two attributes of God that are so important to note when we're reading this story in context. Uh, we talked about an attribute of God being something that God is the source of, not something we describe Him as. You know, an attribute for us, sometimes people say things about us and it's more adjectives than actually essence. And when we're talking about God as knowledgeable, we're not saying that he's an attribute of God is knowledge. No, he's the source of knowledge. When we say that God is love, we're not applying that attribute to God. We're actually saying that God is actually the source of love. It's just, it's, it's so important, I believe, for us to note that for us, when it comes to attributes, we practice and produce them, uh, especially by the work of the Holy Spirit, we, we produce the fruit of the Spirit, those attributes of God. We can practice them the best case we can. But God is the substance and the source of those things. And it's so important to note that these are things that we're talking about that God is, not just to be described as. Two of those that we talked about briefly was omniscience and omnipresence everywhere and all-knowing. Now, I want you to ask yourself a question. When it comes to the now, so there is a next, in this love-hate relationship with technology. I'm not anti-technology, but I want you to understand something when we look at the story of Babel and this technological advancement that's happening, this tower that they're building. God knows that it wasn't a good idea. And why wasn't it a good idea is the question. Because he knows we have limits, and our human frame is built with limits. I want you to think about it this way. This, this cell phone that you have in your pocket, uh, this is an iPhone, uh, Wayne Gretzky's on the back. Um, but I want you to think about your cell phone in the context of, are you able to, like if I wanted to, could I face some time, uh, FaceTime with someone or have a, a Zoom meeting with somebody in South Africa right now? Yes, I could. I could pull them up and talk to them. Uh, I could be on the other part of the world on a conference call. We could record uh, literally from, let's just say, the Philippines. I mean, we could go to Ethiopia and have an Ethiopian meal, and I could bring you there with me. This cell phone allows us to be everywhere, omni present. Now, let me ask you another question about your cell phone, specifically your cell phone. Um, can you just Google? Can you just search it? Like, if you don't know it, can you just pull it up? Like, for the most of us that have a smartphone, that's arguably not making us any smarter. We just pull up a website. We Google a website. We say, all right, what year was so-and-so established or what happened in this city? You know, where's a good restaurant around me? I mean, we ask it for all kinds of information. And Albert Einstein said it best. He said, information is not knowledge. But yet we have access to all this information. It doesn't mean we have the knowledge of this information. But what time does Google close? What time does the cell phone not search? The truth is, is this not only has the ability to amplify 
our ability to be omnipresent, uh, but it also gives us a form of omniscience. So we take something that is an attribute of God, that He's the source and the substance of, that we can only practice and um, you know, produce by the work of the Holy Spirit. We take something that God can do that we cannot. We take an omnipresent and an omniscient device and we put it in our pocket and we walk around with towers of Babel and we wonder why we feel that weight. If I can just simply say, uh, the best way to think about this is through an illustration. Uh, here's you, or me, or a person. Now, you might have a carnigan like this. Uh, some of you may or may not have gray hair. Uh, some of you might not have any hair, but, you know, that's okay. Uh, but let's just say this is us. Okay, it represents uh, us. I got it out of the nursery. It's the best I could do. Our sprouts room. And our human frame can only handle omniscience and omnipresence at certain levels. We're not meant to be everywhere and all-knowing. We're meant for proximity. We're meant for uh, the table. We're meant for intimacy. We're meant for this life that has limits. We, we are a human being, not just a human doing. God is able, we are not able to handle the weight of omnipresence and omniscience. So I will show you what that looks like. Here's omnipresence and omniscience. And I, I'm not sure if you can see this. I'll make sure that you can here. Uh, we've, we've got this thought that we're able to carry around our cell phone with Babel in our pocket, constantly bathed in screen time, being you know, connected to all kinds of parts of the world where we're suffering from anxiety and compassion fatigue, and we're inundated all the time with other things that we need to know, stories we're not even connected to on the other side of the world where we're just taking all this in as these, these literal like computers that God has made, and we've got these limits. And then we've got all of the knowledge that's available to us, and we're drowning in information, and we very rarely grab a hold of revelation. It's because this is happening to us. This is omnipresence and omniscience. And this isn't a magic eight ball. This is from the student center upstairs. But this is, what, this is, the, best way, this is the best way I can explain to you what happens. It's just like, that happens to us. We get crushed underneath the weight of omnipresence and omniscience when we constantly carry Babel in our pocket, when we constantly have technology that enhances our human ability to have it be something where we're trying to be like God and maybe even make a name for ourselves. So what do we do? How do we follow Jesus through this? Because there's no going back. We're not going back to flip phones. We're not going back to no technology. The internet, you know, isn't going away. So number one, you need to realize that Babel's everywhere. We've talked a little bit about a cell phone, but the truth is, is it's maybe another form of uh, communication or technology that allows us to be everywhere and all-knowing. It, it could be, a, uh, you know, your television, a media channel, a news outlet. I mean, we could go through the list, but just be aware that if it's giving you omnipresence and omniscience, it's, it's babble, and it's everywhere. And you are meant to be face-to-face, -face, not screen-to-face. So here's my challenge. I would challenge you to be aware of this and set some limits with this. You know, technology is a great thing until it starts to use us so we do not achieve that greatness. We become enslaved to this, not allowing us to use this as a tool. So, close the world in. When you're at a table with your family, don't bring your devices. Uh, those of you that are married to your spouse, when you head into your, your bedroom, your sacred space, don't bring the world with it. I challenge you for 30 days. I'm saying 30 days, one month. Challenge you and your family in this. You as an individual, you as a unit, you as a, as a group of people, if you gather here at the summit, I would just simply say for 30 days, don't bring your phone or your computer or have the TV on at a dinner table and don't bring it into your bedroom. 
Just see what happens. Just see how things deepen as you step out, out from underneath that weight. Keep those sacred spaces sacred. So ask yourself those questions. Um, and, I, and I also would just say that you need to remember, uh, secondly, that you have limits. Some of us are struggling, and I've struggled with my own anxiety and my own racing thoughts and my own constant uh, churn of never enough and never done and all of these thoughts that come racing. And part of it is because we're suffering from these things uh, because we, we never get out from underneath the weight. We're getting crushed by the eight ball and we're the little Lego guy. And it shows up in our health, in our mental health, in our physical health. Know that you have limits. You are not God. I am not God. We are not built for omnipresence and omniscience. It's a bad idea. We have to be able to hold those things. I love what David says. Can you hold burning coals next to your chest and not get burned? The truth is, is can we handle technology and hold it close and not get burned? Yes, I believe we can follow Jesus into all of this and use our limits that God has hardwired into us to help us understand that we need to practice and produce attributes, not try and achieve and become like God. They tried it in Babel and it wasn't a good idea. And we've got limits. We're meant for more of an experience as followers of Jesus together than just simply carrying Babel in our pocket. It's everywhere, and we've got limits. And I thank God for his, his omnipresence and his omniscience. I'm going to let him be God. I'm going to do my best to be Christ-like and step out from underneath the weight of all of the things that sometimes these things that we think are beneficial end up hurting us in the end. To help you apply the truth found in scripture, we always like to ask three questions. What did you learn about God? What did you learn about yourself? And how are you going to apply what the Holy Spirit is speaking through scripture to your life? We hope that these questions help bring clarity for you. Thank you for being a part of our online encounter Join us in person sometime as we gather as a church on Summit Avenue, or join us here virtually again next week. Let me just say, our city of St. Paul is absolutely amazing. I encourage you to check out all the history it has to offer. And you need to know Summit Church, this church has been a part of that history with so many amazing churches in our city. But speaking specifically about the people of Summit, well, we've been gathering here since 1932. And my hope is that this would be a rich history. It would be our forward legacy. History is a thing of the past, but legacy, it makes way you know, for the future. So the question I have for us is where are we going? Uh, that is a good question. Our vision is simple. It's really to see all of people and beyond living as disciples of Christ, people full of hope, uh, fully known, actively loving one another, living a spirit-led life. Our mission, it's also simple as well, to provide rhythm, location, opportunity for you to have a life-changing experience with God. Uh, you know, we all journey in our diversity to do these three things, become disciples of Jesus, deliver hope, and to champion our city. That's where we're going and that's what we're doing. So maybe a question for you is where are you going? You know, what are your next steps? I would encourage you to do this. Join one of our monthly expeditions. The expedition is a simple experience where you can find out more about who you are in Christ, who Summit Church is, what we do around here, and how you can maybe even you know, play a part. It's less than two hours of your time uh, for the whole month. We also feed you amazing food and even provide childcare. So the question is, where are you going? Hopefully to the expedition is my thought. We're all on a journey following Jesus, maybe together. We just might not be us without you. We'll see you at the summit.